When Jerry Sloan passed away yesterday, it was the end of an era. Growing up in Chicago in the 80s, we had heard about his playing days with the Bulls, but it was more of a myth as those teams got deep in the playoffs, but there simply wasn't anywhere you could actually see footage back then. He was actually the coach of the Chicago Bulls for a few years in the late 70s and early 80s, but we all know him for his 23-year stint as the head coach of the Utah Jazz. So let's look at what offense he ran with those teams that yielded such a high standard of excellence. It was all centered on Carl Malone in the low post, the default setting for a player who cemented himself as one of the all-time great Hall of Famers. The basic offense was an entry pass to him on the block. The passer would cut through, and they'd space around the perimeter and allow him to go to work. One of his pet moves was to face up and hit the jumper as he does over Charles Barkley. If the double came, Malone would find the open shooter and they generated open looks from three this way. Sloan's offense would also set cross screens for him to get extra low post position. And here's an action the Warriors run now, where the two guards out top split in front of the low post and we get a somewhat rare sighting of a Stockton Malone pick and roll. Here's a rip screen they'll set along the lane line, before then running the low post split outside. If nothing materializes, Malone would create his own shot. The post up for Russell was just misdirection, as it always led to a rip screen from Malone. After the cutter goes through, the defense would undoubtedly be convinced he was going to shoot it, and when Akeem comes over, Greg Ostertag dives and it gets Hornacek wide open for the triple. Another creative move they had was to essentially set a ball screen for Malone in the post. When you get a guard doing this, the defense is at a severe disadvantage, with such a tough player this close to the hoop getting an opening on his own man and having a smaller player as the last line of defense. This is most definitely an action we should see more of in today's game. Another set they used a whole lot was right out of the UCLA high post playbook designed by John Wooden. It starts with the guard forward pass, the guard then UCLA cuts off the elbow screen from Malone. It then flows into a double pin down for Stockton on the weak side. The default action for the Jazz, if the shot wasn't taken, was inside ball screen by Malone at the wing, which eventually finds them a bucket when Ostertag tips it in. However, that first UCLA cut is a viable option. and We see Matt Maloney got caught up on the wrong side, and it opens up this nice dish to Ostertag for the layup. Another wrinkle is when Stockton would stop his UCLA cut to turn around and set a rip screen for Malone. On the low post entry, the guards automatically split, but Malone is too busy getting his patented turnaround jumper to fall. This also had flex action built in. With Hornacek initiating the offense, notice how he gets a cross screen for Malone, then gets his one pin down from Greg Foster near the free throw line. All this nice action was well defended, but they eventually do get a good shot in the lane, but Foster short arms it. I really like this wrinkle. After Stockton makes his UCLA cut, he sets a back screen for Ostertag on the weak side. This gets him enough position to muscle in the layup over Hakeem. Plus, putting Malone on the high post with so much movement gave him opportunities to go one-on-one -on -one when he popped out after setting the screen. I was able to find some UCLA high post offense when Sloan coached the Bulls as well. Reggie Theus stops his UCLA cut to find an opening from outside and gets the jumper to fall. And here, they get it when the guard dribbles to the wing and Reggie uses the elbow screen to get low post position for the post up, but turns it over with the offensive foul. More UCLA action as the guard cuts through and stays on the strong side. When the big man steps out for the pass, they get a pin down action on the weak side eventually getting a tough shot that can't fall against the imposing Celtics defense. Watch the guard cut off the high post and then to the weak side for a double pin down while the high post sets an inside ball screen. This didn't generate a good shot, but it's directly related to an action Sloan ran quite a lot of in Utah called the Hawk, something we'd seen run in the NBA since at least in the early 70s. An inside ball screen is set on the wing while a double pin down was happening on the weak side. The player like Hornacek, it made a lot of sense. Again, this one was well defended, but they were still able to generate a roll to the hoop and a layup. 
here it is again, and when Malone sets his screen, it opens up the easy elbow jumper for Howard Isley. The double pin down on the weak side isn't always for the cutter. Oftentimes, either the cutter or the ball handler took the focus of the screener's man, and it opened up the layup, but the pass goes awry. They also had a nice little pin away action for Hornacek, triggered when Stockton would dribble the ball from the guard spot to the wing. They'd form a strong side triangle while Ostertek screened for Horny, and he was getting really good looks from this action, especially going to his left, where his right hip and right elbow are already aligned to the hoop. Of course, the famed Stockton Malone pick and roll did happen, but they would save it for when they really needed the bucket, or the last five minutes of the game. The gravity of those two was very strong, sucking Hakeem to the ball, forcing Eddie Johnson to cover for him, and leaving Byron Russell wide open. It was rare to see a high ball screen for these two, but I caught one midway through the third, and watch how Malone backs up in order to take out Matt Maloney. When Drexler helps, Stockton finds Hornacek wide open for the easy corner three. Watch how the Jazz use the rip screen for Malone, but instead of Malone going to the post, he sets the inside ball screen for Stockton. The spacing got weird, and Greg Foster gets tied up instead of putting in a layup. But teams would be too scared to leave Malone on this, and Stockton would get tons of plays based on the solid screen set. Not sure how he hit this one over Hakeem, but it was crucial. And just as often, this pick and roll pairing would open up a play for someone else on the team, as Hornacek finds his way into the lane for a tough shot. They again catch Clyde Drexler in no man's land, and Hornacek collapses the defense, generating an open look for Stockton that he just can't hit. Here's a cross screen into the Stockton Malone pick and roll, but remember that back screen for the big they like to set on the weak side? It causes mass confusion, Mario Eli doesn't know where to be, and Russell is popping out for a wide open three. And file it in the if it ain't broke don't fix it category, same exact play, same confusion by Eddie Johnson this time, and Russell comes up even bigger with another triple. As a coach, it was Jerry Sloan's relentless demand for execution that saw his Jazz teams achieve such a sustained level of excellence for so long. It was rooted in the hard-nosed Midwest farming existence he grew up in and showed on the court where he was a tenacious defender who prided himself on drawing charges as much as possible, as well as a guy who could catch and shoot a little bit without the slightest notion of fancy dribbling. His impact will always be felt across the basketball landscape, much like those Bulls teams that captured the imagination of Chicagoans back in the 70s, elevating him to myth-like status among the pantheon of basketball greats.